In this video, we're going to talk about tissue grafts or organ transplants and the role in the immune system plays in whether that graft is rejected or not rejected. So before we talk about the kinds of grafts, we need to talk a little bit about why sometimes a tissue graft might get rejected. So as you know, you know, we all have different blood types and that's one of the things that they look at when they're looking at whether they can transplant someone or not. Uh, a transplanted organ from one person to another or not anyways. But the other thing they look at are the HLA antigens that we talked about uh, in the autoimmune section of the last video. The HLA antigens are proteins on our cells that tell our immune system that, hey, I belong here, don't attack me. Because they're proteins, they're coded for by genes, in this case they're called major histocompatibility or MHC genes. And so that's why most often if you're looking for a donor, you look at the person's immediate family because they're probably going to have similar DNA, similar genes. So when they look at whether they can do a, an organ transplant or not, they look at how closely do those people's MHC antigens match up? How, how closely are those genes, those proteins to each other? And they grade that on a scale of 1 to 10. And you know, obviously, the, the higher the number, the better the match is, and the less likely that person is going to need uh, a lot of immunosuppressive drugs to keep their immune system from ejecting it or have the organ get rejected in the first place. So with that said, let's talk about the different kinds of transplants. There's four basic kinds of transplant that, that can happen. The first one is an isograft, and that's where the donor and the recipient are identical twins. So obviously you would have to have an identical twin in order for this to work. Now there are some people that have advocated cloning humans as a way to get replacement organs. They would, they would be an identical twin because if they have the same DNA as you, they'd have the same, same MHC gene, same HLA antigens. But again, there's a problem with, you know, if you take that clone's heart, obviously they can't live without it. So, you know, there's a problem with, you know, how do you justify killing the clone to save the person that the clone was form, form, formed from? You'd almost have to make it a law that clones were not humans in order for that not to be murder. So obviously isographs, you know, not many people can receive that. An autograph, remember that auto is that prefix that means self. So this would be where you take tissue from one part of a person's body and move it somewhere else. For instance, if you know sometimes if somebody's had a torn ligament, they may take a ligament from some other part of the body and replace that. But more often than not, this is used when with burn victims where you'd have to do a skin graft where you take skin from an unaffected part of the body and transplant that to the burn part of the body. Uh, allografts where we have two unrelated or maybe somewhat related individuals, one's the donor, one's the recipient, but they're members of the same species. They're both human beings in most cases when we talk about organ transplants. So somebody's kidneys fail, they need a kidney transplant, they receive a kidney from a donor uh, who is a relative or a closely matched donor and again, the better the match, the more likely that graft is going to be successful. Xenografts, where you have different species involved, the donor is usually some other species besides a human. Uh, in most cases, this doesn't work very well, with the exception we talked about earlier, where we they use heart valves from a pig for people that have a heart murmur or a, or a leaky heart valve. But most of the time, that's going to cause problems. So what, why is it that sometimes the organ gets rejected? So first of all, some of the organs that commonly are transplanted include things like corneas, livers, hearts, lungs, and so on. So when it, the tissue does get rejected, it's because the recipient's body mounts an immune response, a cellular immune response, T cells are involved, in the case cytotoxic T cells would attack and destroy the tissues of the donated organ or tissue. 
and you would have a, a tissue rejection reaction. That's why it's so important to match those MHC antigens. Now, even if you have a close match, you still don't have a perfect match unless it's a autograft or an isograft. So a lot of times we have to use immunosuppressive drugs to prevent the person from having an immune response. Um, that makes them more susceptible to infection. So sometimes we have to then give them a therapeutic doses of antibiotics to prevent any kind of bacterial infection that might be harmful. Um, we've started using some of these immunosuppressive drugs to also treat some of the autoimmune disorders that we talked about uh, in the last video. Things like Enbrel and things like that, which can, again, prevent the immune system from attacking the own, the own cells, or in some cases, the donated cells, but again, makes them more susceptible to the infections. And finally, lifespan changes. What happens to our immune system as we go throughout our life? So typically, one of the main reasons we see changes in the immune system throughout life is the thymus gland. Remember, the thymus gland is small in newborns and, and infants, and it grows until about puberty, where that's where it's going to reach its largest relative size. It's where your immune system is going to be the most effective. And then from puberty on, it starts to shrink by the involution, which means you have fewer and fewer activated T cells, including those helper T cells, which are so important. Um, so as we get older, risk of infections tend to go up. Our antibody response to antigens begins to slow down. Uh, interestingly enough, though, IgA and IgG antibodies tend to go up in the body, whereas IgM and IgE antibodies tend to decrease. Um, because of the, the weakening of the immune system, people as we get older are susceptible to things that we wouldn't have gotten sick from earlier. That's why it's much very important to make sure the very young and the elderly get vaccines to the influenza and things like that. But also there are vaccines that can prevent things like shingles, which you know anybody that's had chicken pox is at risk for developing shingles at some point in their life. And if their immune system becomes weakened either through an immunodeficiency uh, like AIDS, or just because of age, they're more susceptible to this. So we, again, we have a vaccine to help prevent that from occurring as well.